Radical Nation YouTube fam. What's going on? Greetings from beautiful Miraflores, Lima, Peru. And listen, what you're getting ready to watch right now is my masterclass that I did in my mentorship about American Express. Literally, I'm going to break down every hack gem that there is all value, all stuff, no fluff. But listen, if you want to get into the mentorship program, you need to do so now because we have over 80 master classes in the program for business credit, personal credit, real estate investing, you name it, content creation. It's the number one stop for entrepreneurs to go. You have access to me in there and over 650 mentees. Listen, if you ask anybody, this place is the place to be. But listen, we're getting ready to raise the price, so you need to text mentorship or purchase to the 702 number text mentorship or purchase to the 702 number you will get an application you need to fill out that application if you are approved you will have 48 hours to move forward because of the demand for this program so check your email check your text messages 15 minutes after you apply you should have an answer from my team or myself of whether you are approved or denied and you can move forward but listen if you want in you need to take action okay listen action takers change the world and this is right here the world is your oyster and this is not lifestyle marketing guys it's absolutely possible through leveraging credit to build wealth. All right, guys, take care. Peace. So why should you use American Express? Well, you should use it if you're growing your credit because it's going to be easy to really scale your credit. You should use it in your business because it's really easy to get 0% uh, business credit cards with them as well. So you don't have to work with Fund and Grow or any other funding company. You can literally get this yourself, do this yourself. And they also have a lot of different options uh, that I'll be talking about as well. So let's talk about some interesting facts. First of all, they have credit cards and they have charge cards. The difference, everybody, is a charge card is you have to pay it in full every single month, okay? You can have up to 10 charge cards with one social security number, okay? Let's talk about that. Now, what that qualifies for is let's say you have two businesses, okay? First of all, let's get it out of your head. Can I, can I do this with no PG? Not unless you're making $2 million a year. If you're not making $2 million a year, you don't qualify for a commercial credit card with American Express. So right now, let's eliminate the question, can I do this with no PG? Not unless you're making $2 million, okay? So unless you're making $2 million, you're going to have to co-sign on behalf of your business. So if you have a business credit card with them, you're going to be using your social security to personally guarantee the business credit card, okay? So business credit cards, they need to be the business credit cards, business charge cards, they're going to be both uh, guaranteed with your personal credit. As far as the charge cards go, these are paid in full every single month, unless you do the pay over time option with American Express. And I wouldn't recommend that because it's very, very high interest. Now, sometimes when you're going to get a new American Express charge card, you can see, is there a promotion where there's 0% for six months, 0% for 12 months, okay? That can vary depending on what the promotion is. Another hack that you can use is you can do, you can basically, you can use like a VPN service to, to get the best deal possible. For example, let's say you're in Iowa. Folks don't make as much money in Iowa as they make in California, right? So the, the, the whole offer could be different for somebody in California versus somebody in Iowa. So the VPN can really come into play when it comes to getting the best offer possible for you, okay? So charge cards, like I said, they gotta be paid in full every single month. We're gonna cover some of those uh, credit cards. Uh, you can carry a balance with them, but the, the thing about American Express is they have very hefty interest, okay? They are great with rewards, but they will hit you over the head with interest, okay? This is not gonna be your low interest credit card whatsoever. You're better off with a credit union when it comes to that but I'm just going over all the differences. They have credit cards and they have charge cards. Now, the charge cards have the highest annual fees. The credit cards don't have those high annual fees unless they're a co-branded card, which we'll go over as well, like the Aspire card, the Delta card, uh, the Marriott card. Um, they have different tiers of these cards as well. So based on the different card that you go with in that series will be the different annual fee that's attached to it, okay? But for the most part, the charge cards are gonna have the higher annual fees. You can have up to four credit cards with American Express and 10 charge cards. So if Shamori has a business A and has a business B, he's co-signing for both of those businesses, right? So what they classify as 10 charge card is you using your social security, period, okay? Because whether you have a personal, a business, you're still using your social security because that's guaranteeing the debt, okay? So if you have two businesses, you can share you know, five cards between each. You can do nine cards with one and one with another, whatever you wanna do, okay? But you can only have 10 accounts of the charge cards, 
total, okay? So you can actually have up to 14 cards with American Express, four being credit cards, 10 being charge cards, okay? Now, we have a differential things right here. There's a little bit of differences here. Personal cards are different than how they operate with the business cards with American Express. Let's go over that. Personal cards are going to report to the personal bureaus and charge cards do not reflect credit limit unless bucketed. Okay, we'll go over what bucketed means. What bucketed means is normally when you get a charge card with American Express, there is normally not a spending limit. That doesn't mean you have unlimited credit. It means that they have not allocated an actual credit limit to your account. There's an internal limit that they won't let you go over, right? But they actually won't be reporting an actual credit limit to the bureaus unless you're bucketed. So that means, example, again, Shamora uses his card in a way that they don't deem fit or they don't like or they feel is risky. They could say, you know what, Shamori, we're going to take your gold card. We're going to move it down to a $4,000 limit. So if Shamora uses $2,000 of it and it reports to the bureaus, well, he has a 50% utilization at this point. Okay? So you guys need to know that if you're bucketed, they will report that, that line to the bureau like that. And they'll almost treat it like a, a credit card in that sense to the bureaus, okay? But if it is not bucketed, now we don't have that utilization problem. So the best thing, if you're not going to use a business credit card, is to use a personal charge card. I've never even said that on my YouTube channel yet. But that's the bottom line. If you're not going to use a business credit card that does not report to the, uh, to the, the personal bureaus, then you want to be using a personal charge card that does not state an actual limit because there's no utilization if there's no limit. Does that make sense? Hope so. Okay. So the personal cards, they're going to report to the bureaus. That's great because when you're building credit, you need trade lines, right? And we're going to talk about in this presentation, uh, you know, when should you actually apply for a personal credit card with American Express? Because and I have my own thoughts and opinions on that. This is not the first card in your series that you want to go for whatsoever. Also, I told a lot of you guys when you guys joined this mentorship, it's what you don't know that could be hurting you and you don't know what you don't know. There's a strategic way to apply for these cards so that way you get the most bang for your buck when it comes to inquiries and new accounts, right? You have to know the game to play the game, all right? So business cards is a little bit different, okay? Business cards do not report to the business credit bureaus. What does that mean? They will not help you build business credit, okay? So you say, well, why do I want it? Well, it's going to be great because it will help you hide your utilization, okay? For those of you guys that are brand new, we have a bunch of replays. Go back into the replays, watch the personal credit videos that we've made, watch the business credit masterminds that we made. There's over 30 hours of content on the business side already, okay? But because um, the business cards do not report uh, business credit, Okay, they do help you hide your utilization because these business cards do not report to the personal bureaus. So they don't report to the personal bureaus. So there's no utilization problem. They don't report to the business credit bureaus. So they're not helping you build business credit. Okay, but what they are doing is they're also helping you get uh, higher limits and a better point structure for everything that you do with American Express. Okay, so you're basically going to have higher limits on the business cards and they're going to give you on the personal cards. Why? Because they, they have done so much market research, American Express, they actually know, why does this person need $80,000 credit line? How are they using $80,000, right? Especially with an economy in 2023, a lot of lines are going to be cut. A lot of people have had their Amex card cut. A lot of people have had their Amex card bucketed. If that's you, put me in the chat, okay? If you've had any line cut so far, get ready. There's going to be a lot more. The whole goal here is to get into business credit, okay? Business businesses and business credit is, is, is the key to being successful as an entrepreneur. The reason why people don't get into this is because they don't know the game. You're going to learn the game, okay? But the nice thing about the business credit cards is they do not report utilization to the personal bureaus, okay? So you can hide your utilization, put all your spend on there. I'm even going to show you the 0% strategy with American Express as well, okay? But you can get some massive lines with business cards and it's really helpful for real estate investing, fix and flips, things like that, okay? Paying contractors. All right, so we got Amex personal checking account. This is something that a lot of people don't know about, okay? So 
American Express, okay? So check this out, guys. American Express rewards checking. There are no fees to open an account, no monthly fees, no minimum deposit or balance requirements. Expand your membership with a checking account today. Now, you say, can I get this if I'm not an American Express holder? Look at this. Currently available only to consumer card members who have had a card account for three months or longer. Again, that's the 90-day rule, okay? So, and also says American Express business checking customers are not eligible at this time. We're going to cover the business account in a second. So, if you're somebody that wants to do a lot of business with American Express, you might want to look into this, okay? And the reason for that is, is because the more you can do business with American Express, even on the personal side, the more data points they're going to have on you, the more credit they're going to extend to you and the more offers they're going to extend to you as well. Um, what I really thought interesting what, about this was you can actually earn membership reward points just by using your debit card. Now, I'm not a debit card guy, okay? There's very few instances where I'll ever use a debit card. Why? Because when you use a debit card, you're using your own money. You're not using somebody else's money. Rich people never use their own money. They use other people's money. They control everything and own nothing, right? So there is very, very few times I will ever, ever, ever use a debit card. I will always be using a credit card as much as possible, okay? The cool thing though is, is if you ever do want to use a debit card and you like going that route, if that's your style, if that's your vibe, the cool thing is, is you can actually gain membership reward points by just using your debit card, which is a lot better than you using your credit union's debit card or any other debit card because you're not getting, those points aren't worth what MR points are. Membership reward points are what MR points are. Membership reward points, the value of them, incredible. We have a seven hour travel hacking video in this mentorship. I suggest, suggest you watch it. You can literally learn travel hacking in one call, okay? But if you really wanna stack MR points, and you want to do more business with American Express, go open a free checking account if you're an American Express holder, okay? That actually changed because before people would be joining the account in, in hopes of getting a credit card with American Express and being in their ecosystem. So this has recently changed. So now you actually have to be a card holder for three months. Now, the business checking, okay? Let's go over that. Meet the business checking account built for businesses like yours. The biggest problem with business checking accounts are they're so expensive. Chase, Wells Fargo, U.S. Bank, you name it. There's fees on top of fees on top of fees on top of fees. Now, this is a really good bank account, okay? And I'm actually going to be opening one. Why? Look at the, the thing that they got going on right now. This is as of today, right? Until January 3rd of 2022, you can earn 60,000 membership reward points after qualifying activities, okay? We're gonna go over that in a second, okay? You can earn 1.3 APY on your money, which is not bad. I mean, I'm not a, you know, that, that's not a lot, but it's something, okay? Uh, but the, what I love about it is the MR points because then we can use that for travel hacking. Also, what I like about this is now, once you're in the business checking account with American Express, uh, I'm telling you, you're going to have a lot of a lot of things to open up to you, especially what we're getting ready to talk about here in a minute with cabbage. But uh, no monthly maintenance fees. That's key. 24 hour support. OK, right here. You need to make uh, you need to deposit five thousand dollars or more within 20 days of opening your first account. OK, and then you need to maintain an a, a average account balance of five thousand dollars for two months, 60 days. What is an average uh, account balance of 5,000. What that means is, is, is basically you can't dip under 5,000. So if you do that, the more you put in there, the better. Don't try to play the system. Don't try to take the shortcut. Literally you make a mistake, you lose the bonus. Just put a ton of money in there. Okay. Put five, put $6,000 in there and keep it in there for 60 days. Okay. Just put $6,000 in there and keep it there for 60 days. Okay. Then you'll get your bonus. All right. And then also you need to make 10 or more qualifying transactions on your account. Look at the fine print for that, but it's very, very easy to do. Here's what I like about it. Let's say you open a business checking account. What do you think they're going to offer you after you start using your account? Credit cards, business credit cards, business line of credit, things like that. They're going to start marketing to you because you're in their ecosystem, right? So it's going to be very, very helpful for you for somebody that wants to do a lot of business with American Express. Now, 
let's look at the business checking account. You can apply for an American Express business checking account online in as little as 10 minutes. You'll need a few to answer a few basic questions about your business, including your industry revenue and how you plan to use your online business checking account. And you'll need to provide an EIN number, which is the social security number for your business. I'm breaking this down for brand new people that may not know this, okay? I know that sounds so elementary, but your EIN is literally your business's social security number, okay? You can build business credit off of your EIN number, which is basically your business acquiring credit, okay? But you, as the person using your SSN, is the co-signer for your business because your business hasn't proven that it can manage credit yet. Okay, you literally have to build your business credit and you use your personal credit to do so. Okay, don't listen to the people that say no PG, you don't have to use your personal credit. Bull crap, it's not real. It's a lot of it's a lot of scams going on with that stuff. It's very minimal. Listen, that was the old way of doing things. The new way is you use your your, your personal credit to build credit quickly and fast. Okay, the people that say that want a shortcut. We don't believe in shortcuts. This is a marathon, it's not a sprint, okay? So if you're approved for an account, you'll be able to link an existing bank account and start moving your money over. Now, what I wanted to do, I put this screen here so that way you guys can see it. You need your EIN number, you need your articles of organization. You guys need to have a binder with all of these things and who's your officers, who's your members, who's your managers. We're gonna do a call on that. Basically all of your compliance with business, okay? You need to have this documentation. Why would anybody extend business credit to you when you don't even know who your members or your managers are of your business? You say, well, I'm the only one. Then you need to make sure you're listed correctly, okay? Um, on top of that, you need to make sure you have your articles of organization. Information, your driver's license, state ID, passport, all these things right here, very, they need to make sure that you're not money trap, uh, money laundering and uh, all that type of stuff. So. You need to do that, okay? Um, now, what is the cost of opening your business? There is no cost to an American Express business account. There is no monthly minimum balance requirements or maintenance fees. Guys, this is a great, great business checking account. It's very simplistic, and it's gonna help you build business credit with American Express. It's not gonna help you build business credit, but it's gonna help you build data points, credit of data points with American Express, okay? So, What's really also cool is you can actually move your MR points and you can have it as a deposit in your business checking account. So if you want to liquidate those points, you can actually have that be a deposit directly into your American Express business checking account, which I thought was really interesting. Now, I would never do that, okay? But some of you all may want to do that, okay? For people that are manufacturer spending with American Express, and we're going to talk about that in this presentation as well, um, you guys could manufacture spending. Basically, it's going to be like cash back, right? Um, and then for those of you guys that are not manufacturer spending, which, you know, you want to be very careful manufacturer spending with American Express. For those of you guys that are not manufacturer spending uh, with American Express, you can gain a lot of points and you can actually transfer these, these points into different airlines. So that way you can travel and get the maximum value of your points. Most people pay things with their points you waste your points. Points are worth way more when you transfer them out to travel partners, okay? And you need to watch that seven-hour travel hacking uh, mentorship call that we've had in the mentorship already. So that way you can learn how that game is built. Uh, but literally, if you don't want to do travel hacking and you say, I want cash back, well, now you have the option. You have the option of cashing out into your business uh, checking account, or you have the option of using those points however you deem fit. So it's the best, best of both worlds, okay? Um, so it's really cool that you're able to do that uh, with American Express. Now, um, I also put this in here as well. They don't have fees for ACH and wire transfers and things like that. These are things that business checking accounts nickel and dime you with, all right? Because they don't have an actual branch, everything is done online. They're helping you cut the cost on, on things that can add up quickly, okay? So I am going to actually be having an, a business checking account open with American Express for the points, number one. Uh, number two, I'm going to be af going after their line of credit here very, very shortly after my round of funding, okay? We're going to go over what that is here in a second. So American Express business line of credit, it goes up to $250,000 on a soft pull, okay? Now, it's with Cabbage, okay? Cabbage is, is basically, it's underwritten by American Express, okay? So basically, here's, here's what you need to know, okay? If you have American Express right now, it's a soft pull. 
If you don't have American Express right now, it's a hard pull. I'll say that again. If you're an American Express customer, it's a soft pull. If you're not an American Express customer, it's a hard pull. And it's a hard pull from Experian, okay? You need to be 18 years old. You need to have started your business at least a year ago. So you need to be in business for 12 months. If you're not in 12 months, forget about it. This is not going to work for you. Have a FICO score of at least 640 at the time of application. I would not even want a 640. I would want to have a 720 at least, okay? That's marketing jargon right there, people, okay? Most people are going to be denied at 640. Have an average monthly revenue of at least $3,000. So your business needs to be... Um, literally bringing in $36,000 a year. If it's not, you don't qualify, okay? So I'm just wanting to break that down for you, layman's turn. This is right from the website. I'm trying to save you some time, okay? Um, so focus on growth, okay? So the application is instant, instantaneous. What happens is, is they usually use like a plaid to connect into your, um, your business checking account to see how much uh, your business is actually bringing in, okay? They're using AI. Everybody, the more we go down this road called life, 2023, 2024, listen, it is going to be more and more AI, okay? Which means the AI is going to be smarter than you. It's going to be harder and harder and harder and harder to hack algorithms, to do credit hacking, all this stuff. Credit is a temporary play. I'm going I'm to say that again. Credit, the way that we do credit right now is not going to last forever. It's going to be here very temporarily. The way that the new credit system is going to be ran is going to be completely different, okay? That's not, a, that's not what we're talking about tonight. We'll get into that another night. Um, but, but what we have right now is not going to be here forever, okay? Term length and loans, basically, you can kind of go through that um, up to 18 months as well. Very straightforward. You only use, you only pay interest for when you use the line, okay? So what a business line of credit is, is literally a line of credit that's available to you. Think about a pot of gold. And when you need some money, you go into your pot of gold, right? But you don't pay back any of that pot of gold, you know, unless you've used it, okay? So it's very nice to have lines of credit. Lines of credit are amazing, amazing. Business lines of credit are even better because they don't report to the personal bureaus for the most part, okay? You gotta always double check. But for the most part, these business lines of credit never show up to the personal bureau. So you can max it out, okay? You need to buy that home. You need to, you know, put those renovations in, max it out. It's not going to hurt your score. It's only going to hurt your score when you max out something on your personal side. Anything that reports to your personal bureau, that's where it's going to hurt you. If it's not reporting to your personal bureau, it's not going to hurt you, okay? And that's key. You only know what you know. All right, so here we go. Uh, must be in business for 12 months. Have a business checking account, okay? Be at least 18 years old, right? It's underwritten by American Express. And uh, yeah, if I'm not an, check this out. If I am not an existing American Express customer is a full credit report or hard pull obtained from the cre Consumer Credit Bureau for the application. Yes, I am saving you all time. If you are not an American Express customer, you will be hard pulled for this. And you need to make sure that you hit these data points. If you are an American Express member, you will not have a hard pull, but you need to make sure that you hit these data points. Okay, and I even put in the disclosure, Cabbage Funding offers a commercial line of credit ranging from $2,000 to, to $250,000, right? And you can read those fine prints on your own, but I put it right in here for you in the presentation slide, okay? So how do we qualify for American Express credit cards, okay? We're done talking about the checking account. We're done talking about the business checking account. I put it in there because I want you all to understand that there's other things that American Express offers that most people don't know about. Their business checking account is probably one of the best business checking accounts for somebody brand new in business or that wants a very simplified streamlined process, especially with 60,000 MR points on the, on the table for having an account balance of $5,000 for 60 days and then doing 10 transactions within that 60 days. Yeah, I love it, okay? So how do we qualify for the cards, okay? I say, people don't say this, but I say you need a 720 credit score and Experian. I've seen as low as 700. I've heard stories of 680. I've heard stories of 660. These are not the norm, okay? I like to play it safe. I, I, am, I have a high risk tolerance, but to get my credit, I'm very conservative. What does that mean? I'm not disputing inquiries on open accounts. 
You know, I'm not going to, you know, take somebody's thing where they say you need a 700 credit score. I'm going to go for 720. Okay. I'm going to use, I'm going to be very conservative in my data points. So that way I make sure I get the credit. I'd rather be safe than sorry. Okay. So 720 credit score and Experian as low as 700 I've seen. Okay. I say what I've seen works best for many people that do funding is that you have at least three revolving trade lines on your account. So ladies and gentlemen, does that mean American Express is your first business card? No. Does that mean it's your second business card? I'm mean, second credit card? No. It should be your third or higher. And I would actually say it should be the last card you go for. You say, why? I'm going to tell you why, okay? In a minute. So no late payments or charge off. So American Express is not new inquiry sensitive. Ameri which is good, right? So what does that mean? You could run a bunch of inquiries and get this last because they're not new inquiry sensitive. American Express is not new account sensitive. They're not so much new account sensitive either, okay? What they are sensitive about is, do you have a late payment? Do you have a charge off? Do you have a negative on your credit report? They are more worried about the negatives than your little inquiries and new accounts. They're okay with that. They got AI. They got some of the best AI in FinTech right now, period. They even have a rat team. So those of you guys that make YouTube videos, be very careful what you say about American Express because they can look up who you are and they can report your, you to the rat team. They call it the rat team. And yeah, they can bucket you. They can put you in a manual review. They can discontinue services with you if they want. This is a real deal. Okay, so if you are doing credit videos, make sure that you're very conscious about what you put out about American Express because they will look you up. I promise you. I've, <laughs> I have story after story, and some of them I'm not at liberty to talk about because uh, I've talked directly to American Express uh, people within it, internally and uh, some interesting things that I found out for sure. Now, because it's not new account sensitive, um, this should be one of your later cards that you go for in your funding round. You only know what you know. If I would have had the radical market of mentorship, I would have probably paid mm, five times the amount that you guys paid for it. Here's the deal, because we're learning so much that you just don't know about. I tell everybody this. I started repairing my credit at the age of 30. I'm 36. Well, how did you learn how to, to repair your credit? YouTube. I went to YouTube University. It's so funny. I went back to YouTube University to teach people from what I learned from, right? Ask Sebi, Credit Shifu, Brandon Zhang. I mean, Brian Zhang, those were the guys, right? Um, now, they're big on chase cards. You know, I shot myself in the foot. You know, I got, uh, I got a bunch of credit cards because I wanted limits. I got a bunch of store cards. I did it the wrong way because I watched a bunch of silly YouTubers saying, hey, get this limit with this store card. You get this. I was full of store cards. I was full of Discover, Capital One. Uh, it was a mess, right? It was a mess. I didn't really know what I was doing. And some of you guys are in the same boat. What I'm trying to tell you is don't rush it. Do it right. Don't rush it. Do it right. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. American Express will be there for you. What I would do is do like a, I'm, I'll be honest with you, I would do a secured credit card like a, like a Discover, uh, Discover secured card that unsecures, a Navy Federal secured card that unsecures. That way, that, that card is going to unsecure. I can raise the limits on those cards, and then I can really maximize that one inquiry and in one new account. I know it's not sexy. I know it's, it's, it's coming in on the long game. But I'm telling you what, if I can get a Navy Federal, you know, and secured card, unsecures in, in, in three months, four months, okay, and then I get a credit limit increase on top of it, well, my first credit line could be $12,000, right? And then 90 days from that, I could raise it up to 25000 okay? That's how you do it right, okay? It takes time, though, because people are in a hurry. They want, they want a microwave credit report. Um, but that would be one way that you could really maximize the Navy Federal play. Another way you could do it is with Discover, okay? You take this care of Discover, Discover will take care of you. And then your third card could be a Chase card, right? Specifically a business card. So you could do a Chase business card because that, that won't even count towards, uh, you know, 524, okay? So the 524 rule with Chase is saying you can't have more than five revolving accounts. That means lines of credit. That means credit cards. Anything that is revolving every single month on your personal credit file, that is what goes in the 524 rule. 
Okay. So you want to really be careful to protect that. If you want to work with Chase, if you have no business or no desire to work with Chase and forget what I'm saying right now, but I'm here to tell you that Chase has some of the best business credit cards with big lines of credit. That's where I messed up. I still don't have a Chase card. Okay. I'm going to have a Chase card. I'm going to have the Chase in cards and the Chase business Hyatt card. But when you like your, your second card, your third card, you could literally go for a business card as a sole proprietor. You could, and, or you could start, you know, you could start building, you could start really leveraging credit, right? If I'd have known this stuff, it'd have been game over. Okay. Um, but I say to get a business card with Chase because you can get a ton of business cards with Chase and it never go against your 524 rule. And then if you want to get the Sapphire or whatever, then you can get that, get, get the business cards first, right? Because you want to have cards that don't report to your personal credit, right? There's a lot of 0% offers with Chase on the business side. Chase Inc. card, maybe there's a 0% offer. Boom, got that for 18 months, 12 months, six months, whatever the case is. You can max it out. Doesn't hurt your credit, right? You can put it into, you can liquidate it, all types of things. But you just got to know how to play the game smart, okay? Um, and so that's what I would do and then go to the personal side. Um, like I said, American Express is going to be there. And what I talk about here, you'll, you'll really understand that here in a minute. So let's talk about the personal cards for a minute. This is one of my favorite cards with American Express. I have it. It's called the Hilton Aspire card. It's their top tier card. It actually comes with complimentary diamond status, which is the highest status for Hilton. Now, it's got a hefty annual fee, but it's got a lot of rewards to it. Okay, we're going to kind of go over that in a minute. But once you're a Hilton Diamond member, you can status match into other hotel chains. So there's just a lot of different perks that come with these statuses. For example, I'm getting ready to be a globalist with Hyatt, for example. And if, if anybody's traveled with Hyatt outside of the country, they know how amazing uh, Hyatt is. World class. Uh, you know, if you if you have the, if the club access, you have unlimited drinks and and um, and food. Uh, world-class breakfast in the morning, four o'clock checkouts, right? Things like that. Hilton is very good as well, right? And this is their top tier card. And for the longest time, I would be strictly Hilton. Um, now I'm Hyatt, but um, I use this card all the time. Um, it comes with a high credit limit. It does have a high annual fee of $450, but you get 14 points on hotels and resorts. So you use this card at a hotel, you get 14X points that, plus whatever your status is for, the, for it as well, okay? Then if you start using this through shopping portals and you need to watch the, the, the travel hacking video for that, but we'll talk about that again. Basically, you buy through shopping portals. Um, American Airlines has shopping portals. You buy through an American Airlines shopping portal, well, now you get lo lo loyalty points towards status with American Airlines, right? Or Rakuten or Alaska Airlines, Delta, whatever the case is, so many people forget to put the Chrome browser on their Chrome. So when they're shopping, they just forget about it. But I'm always shopping through my Chrome browser. So I take my card. Whenever I go to a website, the Chrome browser pops up. I say activate. And then I just shop like normal. But I get reward points for my credit card. And I get reward points from the shopping portal. Okay. Uh, 7X on travel, right? And you can kind of look through everything that of, of what travel is on dining, 7X as well. So eating out, takeout, whatever. It's just a really good travel card. Um, and then if you're also using, um, if you're also using uh, Hilton a lot, it's really good. They also have this thing right here that know if you're approved with no credit score impact. Um, that's really good as well. They're really taking that model that, that Apple did with, with Goldman Sachs and telling you if you're pre-qualified, uh, before you actually ever get anything uh, dinged, which I really, really love as well. The green card, okay? This is the most slept on card in American Express period. One of them, okay? One of them. Because it's green, people don't think it's as good as platinum. I like it better than platinum. I'll tell you why. The platinum card for me is 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 not better than the business platinum card. If I can have a business platinum card or a personal platinum card, I'd rather have the business platinum card because it's meant for business, number one. Number two, it's not reporting to the personal credit. Number three, I'm going to have higher lines internally with a business platinum over a personal platinum. Okay? The personal platinum also has a high annual fee. So, and the personal platinum is made for travel, where the business platinum is too, 
Okay. So for me, it makes no sense to have a platinum vanilla card. We call them vanilla platinum cards. Okay. Which is there's, it's not a Charles Schwab card. It's not a business platinum card. It's just a, a standard vanilla platinum card. Okay. For me, it's not worth it. Okay. All of the platinum cards have the Centurion Lounge access. So all you guys don't have to worry about that. Um, all of them usually have some type of status uh, with, with Marriott and Hilton. Um, but the, the, the platinum business is meant for business. Um, and so I, I like that better. The green card, I call the millennial card. If you live in an urban area, you do Uber Eats, you do Lyft, you do Uber, you, do, you eat out, you take out, uh, you ride the subway, um, whatever the case is, you get gas, right? Let's look at this. You get three membership reward points per dollar spent, takeout and delivery in the US. That's great. Transit, including trains, buses, CTA, New York, what's going on? You guys too, transit, LA. Okay, anybody riding a train, a bus, a ferry, a subway, and many more, anything that's considered or coded as transit, you get three points back for every dollar spent. Okay. 3X on travel, including airfare, hotels, cruises, tours, car rentals, and more. And here's this. This travel category doesn't have to be what the platinum is. So the platinum will be like 5X, 7X, or whatever. But that's only if you book through American Express. This one, you don't have to. You can get 3X points if you do hotels.com. You can get 3X if you go to Best Western. Like you can do whatever the travel category, whatever it is, you're getting three X points back on restaurants, travel, and transit. Is that not an urban type of card? I think so. So most millennials, Gen Z, you know, you guys are really going to like the green card. I love the green card. I use the green card all the time when I'm actually buying food because it makes more sense for me to get three X points back on it uh, than than not playing the game right. The bottom line is if you don't know the rules of the game, you can't win the rule, you can't win the game. And so you got to know what card gives you the most value for your dollar spent. In this case, when it comes to food, travel, and transit, I love the green card. Look at this annual fee, 150 bucks. Okay. 150 bucks. And there's no preset spending limit to this as well. And if you do do any travel and you want to do clear, I'm not a, a guy that's you know with clear. But if you want to do that, you get that as well. Now, it also talks about, uh, look at points on travel. Travel purchases on third-party travel websites count for the 3X points back, right? Or the travel on Amex Travel. That's what I really love. Look at the transit too. Taxis, rideshare, ferries, tolls, Sun Pass, Florida, what's up, right? <laughs> Chicago, what's up? Everybody that has a toll, pay with your credit card. You're going to get points on it. Parking. Oh my goodness. LA is expensive, right? 75 bucks to park your car, right? Buses, subways. So if you live in an urban area, I don't know why you don't have the green card because it's $150 for an annual fee. You get more bang for your buck for what you're spending. If you do any manufacturer spending, you're crushing it with this card. And it's a lot less than the platinum card, right? You see where I'm going with this? The platinum card for the annual fee is way more than this. Now, if you're traveling all the time and you want to be in the lounges and stuff, okay, I get it. But you also even get credit for lounge access if you want to use priority pass and things like that. Trip delay insurance. How many people have missed a trip due to this, due to that? Everybody's trying to sell you trip insurance on websites. You get that with the green card, okay? No foreign transaction fees. You can, have, you can buy margaritas in Mexico and never pay a transaction fee with your credit card. Love it, okay? Rental loss, damage insurance. They usually want you to put something on your car insurance. Always look over your, your paperwork, but I never do. I use American Express, right? Baggage insurance. These are things that you just don't know if you don't know, right? And Global Assist Hotline, okay? Um, so I love the green card for anything related to urban activity. And if you even want to separate your personal from your business spend, which you should, put your stuff on the green card and use your business cards for your, for your business. Super easy to separate things for tax purposes as well. Love it. Amex Gold Card is a beast too. Let's look at it, okay? 4X points at restaurants, 4X points on grocery. I call this the family card. If you have a family, you need to go to Smith's, you need to go to Kroger, you need to go to Publix, right? 
this is going to be a great card for you because you're going to get four time four points per dollar spent at the grocery store now my avocados went from one dollar to ten dollars in the last 10 days it feels like inflation is crazy okay so literally up to twenty five thousand dollars purchases per year you'll get the 4x on it right so don't get too excited but yeah that's a lot that's a lot of points right also worldwide at restaurants worldwide so that means i could be having spaghetti in rome and i'm going to be able to get 4x points on that it's amazing the devil's in the details right so also delivery in the u.s so if you do uber eats in the u.s but you're eating out in kuala lumpur malaysia boom you're getting points on both purchases okay on flights book directly with airlines now that's not the same with the gold card right i mean with the green card the green card over here was 3x on travel on third party this one's only on flights you see the difference so if you don't have a family and you're not going to i don't i don't go to the grocery store like that right i need to but i don't okay and the restaurants for me that's one extra point okay for over here uh you know restaurants right here that's only one point difference for me this card makes more sense for me as a as a single male with no kids than the gold card okay you get the little dining credit that's cute i like it okay but um you know we got the uber cash the dining credit they're both good and i don't think that one's we don't have to play that is this better than this card it's what's better for you i'll say that again it's not is the gold better than the green card it's is it better for you and it, guess what? If you want both cards, you can have both cards and pay less an annual fee than the platinum card. So the platinum, a lot of times, guys, it's just fluff. It's not stuff, okay? You can literally have a green card and a gold card knowing exactly the points you'll get by spending it for cheaper than the platinum card, okay? And on top of that, you can spread out your, your dates. You can have one on the 1st and the 15th to help out your cash flow too. It's a gem for you, all right? No foreign transaction fees, all that. So it's 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 a good card. I like the gold. I like the green. Let's look at the platinum. This is the vanilla platinum. This is the normal platinum people think about. Okay, five X on flights, book directly with airlines or through American Express Travel. You know, okay. So you have to use directly their portal. They get a kickback. That's why they give you five X on it. Okay, but for me, three X on flights directly. With, okay, so you get more if you're doing flights through them. But that's not even the way to book flights. Guys, you got to watch the travel hacking thing. And this is 3X anywhere. I can, I can be using Google Flights. You get me? I could be using Expedia. And I'm going to get 3X points back where if I do Expedia with the Platinum, I get one. Because it's not directly through American Express, right? Um, and so everything, you're only getting the benefits of the points if you book directly with American Express. But here's the deal. What happens if prices are inflated? What happens if you're not getting the best deal? Is it really worth it? I don't think so, okay? The reason why the Platinum is nice is because, you know, it is a good travel card. If you're not going to have a business card, it's a good travel card because of the benefits that come with the status that we're going to look at in a second here, okay? So you get a $200 hotel credit, right? You get a $200 airline fee credit. So let's say you... Uh, baggage right with american airlines it, it cover that so when you spend money at american express if it's registered you got to make sure you register it uh, in your back office you know you'll get a credit for that bag right um any type of thing that has to do with a fee it doesn't you don't get a discount on the tickets you can't buy gift cards with them anymore that plays over with but that used to be a thing where you could actually buy gift cards and, uh and have it be credited back to you um gift cards with the airline, that's what I'm saying. So like, if your thing was Delta, you know, with American Express, you know, well, you could go to Delta and buy some gift cards with the, with the credit credit card and you'd have it credited back to you. So you'd almost get like half off a flight or something like that. It was super cool. They took that away. Um, but yeah, the, now this, this airline fee is for uh, miscellaneous pur purchase. Clear credit international program. You guys can kind of look that up. This was super interesting. The Walmart monthly membership credit. Now that's kind of cool. Um, that's the newer thing that they have on there. Okay. It is a, it is a good card. It's just, if you're not going to use these features, it's not meant for you. You really have to kind of go through it. The platinum is a travel and entertainment card. Okay. It's a status symbol. All right. 
So if you're going to be using your digital credit, you know, get up to $20 in statement credits for Hulu, right? Hulu has a lot of sports. Disney, Disney's got a lot, right? Audible, that's a really good one. Self-development, serious, okay? The guess this is something I would use because I, I love personal development. I'm on the road a lot. So, you know, between Sirius, between Audible, between ESPN Plus, you know, Hulu, uh, it's good, right? Uh, they even have um, the, uh, like I said, they have the, the, the Shop Sacks Platinum as well. You guys will have to kind of look through it, but I just want you guys to see the differences already. Urban people, green card. Family people, gold card. People that travel want entertainment, want perks, want status, platinum, all right? But this is just the personal side. All right. You get all these other things that come with it as well. Uh, let's talk about the Centurion lounges for a second. Now, you're going to be able to access any Centurion lounge around the world for free if you're a platinum card holder. Platinum meaning vanilla platinum, Charles Schwab platinum, or business platinum. Okay. Centurion lounge. I was in the Centurion lounge last night, but I wasn't at an airport. You say, where were you? I was at a Los Angeles Lakers game courtside. Okay. And I literally went to the American Express Centurion Lounge, had two margaritas on the house for free. The cool part is you could have, if you actually are a Centurion or, or a platinum member, you can buy a Laker ticket at the very, very top of the arena. And if you're one of the first 150, first 150 people to the Centurion Lounge, you can sit in a club level for free. So you can sit in club level and have drinks for free and have a better seat than the ticket that you purchased, okay? Now, American Express is trying to put their Centurion lounges in, in, in some very premier areas. It's a status symbol, okay? But anytime you're in a Centurion lounge, you get to eat for free, you get to drink for free, you get comfortable study. It's amazing, okay? Um, and I use it all the time. They have a Centurion lounge in, in Las Vegas, in LA, uh, all over. I've had it in Hong Kong. Hong Kong was amazing. I mean, amazing. I've had it in Singapore. That was amazing as well. Um, so it's worth every penny if you utilize it because you could have, you could go crazy and have an entire meal and drinks. You know, it could cost you 50 to 100 bucks. And if you have a family, it could cost you more. Um, and so you can actually bring your family in if you're an Amex holder as well and feed the family too. So, you know, that kind of, that kind of reduces that annual fee, right? The more that you're using, am I using the entertainment credit? Am I using the lounges? Am I using you know, the airlines, am I, am I using these things or am I not? If you're using them, great, do it, live it up. If you're not, may not be the best fit for you, but this one's dope. This is one that a lot of people don't know about the Charles Schwab platinum card. Okay. Um, the, the best platinum card out, maybe let's look at it. Okay. Here's the biggest credit hack that people aren't getting. Okay, let's look at it. You can receive you can receive the, the, the statement credit, but what I love about it is use membership reward points for deposits to your Schwab account. So your Schwab brokerage account, guys. This is a big play. You can manufacture spend with this card and you can move the MR points directly into your brokerage account. Take the brokerage account, get a securities line of credit, which is basically you take it to a credit union like, First Tech Credit Union, and you can literally get a line of credit using your Charles Schwab account as collateral. I'll say that one more time. If you don't want to travel hack, you can use your points to be an investor and you can move those MR points into your Charles Schwab brokerage account that's attached to your credit card. And you literally can take those MR points and move them directly into your brokerage account, purchase stocks with them. OK, especially in a down market, a bear market right now, it's a time to buy up when not financial advice. You guys sign the contract, free me of all liability. So everything I say here is entertainment purposes only. But uh, literally, uh, guys, you guys could literally instead of travel hacking, you could be investing with American Express using those MR points to buy stocks in a bear market, go crazy heavy at it and then get that 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 line of credit from a credit union by leveraging your brokerage account and so you can say hey listen i have fifty thousand dollars in stocks you know i want to get a twenty five thousand dollar line of credit they'll say great we'll use your we'll use your brokerage account as collateral here's a twenty five thousand dollar line of credit you just create a line of credit by using a credit card nobody's going to teach you that okay 
So I'll say it again, by buying things that you would normally already buy for your business or for personal, you can have a system where you're actually taking those points, having them into a brokerage account, investing, taking that investment account, using it as collateral, not selling it. You don't have to pay taxes on it because literally it's a rebate, okay? So it is. So these things are rebates. So literally um, you're using that brokerage account as collateral to back up the line of credit that a credit union gives you. And there's certain credit unions that give security line of credit. You can't get these all over the place, right? There's also ones for life insurance, right? So if you have a cash value in your life insurance, you can use that as collateral to get a massive line of credit, right? And some of these line of credits don't even report to the personal bureau so you can max them out without a killing your credit. So welcome to the radical marketer mentorship, right? $1,500, it's an admin fee. That we, we're just trying to add massive value here. So you're in the right place. So yeah, so this is a big play. I love this play. So why would you have the regular platinum when you can have the Charles Schwab platinum? Uh, I mean, yeah, you're not getting all of the benefits that the platinum gets, but you're still getting the Centurion Lounge. You're still getting the travel perks. You're still being able to use, you're able to use your MR points into your brokerage account. I mean, I, I don't know. I, that's why I say it could be the best platinum because of how you can leverage this card, especially for the annual fee. It's the same. So uh, you can really leverage this more than you can leverage the vanilla one. And then, um, yeah, if you're if you're an American Express holder, it's a soft pull. We'll talk about it in a second. All right, so let's look at the business cards. Notice I didn't highlight all of the personal cards. They have the Delta cards out there. They got the Marriott cards. I don't use them because I, I mean, I'm an American Airlines guy. I'm a Hyatt guy. I'm a Hilton guy. So I just didn't really want to talk about them because uh, this is not really for me. Um, I'm really trying to show you what I use and how I use it. But you guys can go on the website. If you're a Marriott person, American Express is your play. If you're a Delta flyer, you need to be getting the Delta cards, okay? Just go look at what is the best fit for you. Let's look at the business though. This is probably my favorite business credit card with American Express. You say, why? Well, let's look at it. 4X points on the top two categories spent, okay? In your billing cycle. So this can change all the time. So if I'm running, I haven't run any paid ads yet, but the moment that I run paid ads, if I spend $100,000 in ads, I'm getting 400,000 points. Now, if I take those points, 400,000 points, and I have a Charles Schwab platinum as well, I can move those 400,000 points right into my Charles Schwab account. I'll let that sink in. That could be about $40,000. Okay. I'll let that sink in. It's big time. That's a big move. So that's the power of these of these business credit cards is they're stacked to help you get more points. The business credit card is really flexible. So as my spend adjusts in my business, I get rewarded for it. And I don't have to think about what card I'm gonna use as much. So having the business gold with a, with a, with a Charles Schwab Platinum, I love that play, okay? Um, and then everything else is, 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 is 1X points, right? So you're getting rewarded for your top two, you're getting one point after that, and then you get the 25% airline bonus as well. So it's pretty great, okay? Now, what you do wanna see is um, right now, look at this, 0%, this is just as of today, 0% APR for six months. So you get six months at 0%. So you could put up as much spend on this thing as you possibly can, and you don't have to pay interest on that for six months. After six months, you better be ready to pay. Otherwise, you are going to pay a hefty interest price. American Express is not friendly with interest rates. You will be paying out the nose for interest. I'll say it again. You will be paying out the nose for interest if you carry a balance. You don't want to do it, okay? But with this gold card, they do this pay over time thing. And right now, there's a 0% for six months. It's not a year, it's six months. But I'm telling you, you want to start a business, that's a really good card to use starting one out, okay? This was my first business credit card, actually, believe it or not, was the business gold. Let's look at this. All right, so let's look at the Forex categories, okay? So airline purchased directly from airlines. 
Okay, so that's not third party. That's not Expedia. That's not Google Flights. That's American Airlines. That's Delta. That's not Amex Travel. That's the airlines. Alaska, Avianca, Emirates, whatever the case is, has got to be directly from the airlines. Purchases for advertising and select media platforms, online TV, radio, okay? Facebook ads is one of those. U.S. purchases made from technology providers or computer hardware, software. You got Skype, you got Zoom, you got ClickFunnels, you got a website, whatever. If you're spending the most in software, you can get 4X points on that. Super awesome. All right, here's a big one, gas, okay? You get 4X on gas, all the truckers. If you're a trucker, imagine, imagine, imagine the type of points you would get using this in trucking. Imagine, okay? If you're getting 4X per dollar spent, how much do you think gas and fuel and diesel is over the road? A lot. If you have a Denali, if you have a, a SUV, you're already spending a lot per week. Imagine what commercial vehicles are using. So this is right here. Anybody in trucking and transport needs to be having this card. Anybody doing digital marketing needs to be having this card. This is a different angle than what you're seeing, uh, hearing people say, but it's true. If you're eating out a lot, right? You're eating a lot of Cheesecake Factory, restaurants, takeout, delivery, U.S. purchases for shipping, uh, things like that, right? And after that, 1X points, right? Um, so let's talk about the best 0% business cards. So let's talk about why do we want business credit cards at 0%. Again, the best way to start a business is not with a personal loan. The best way to start a business is not with a business loan. It's with a business 0% credit card. Why? Because you're not paying interest at all for a certain amount of time. It's amazing. It's helping you have the runway you need. Okay. Now, you're going to hear a lot of people, Jack McCall, Jeff Seekinger, all these people talk 0% credit cards, fund and grow, credit card stacking programs, guys, literally. This is something you can do yourself. And we will teach you how to do it yourself. And those of you guys that want to make a business out of it and help people get it, this is a great place to learn that, okay? The bottom line is you can do it yourself. If you don't want to spend the time to do it yourself, now you know the game and you can hire somebody to do it for you. And then that fee that they charge you, you can write that off on your taxes, ask a CPA, you will see, and it's a business expense for that fee. So you say, you know what? My time is money. I don't got time to play around with this. I don't want to do it wrong. Let me just get somebody to get the funding for me. Cool. But I don't want people to think that they can't do their own funding because there's a lot of funding companies that will charge you a percentage just for getting you a pledge loan, just for getting you a secured credit card. Believe it or not, it's affordable. Credit builder loans, they'll charge commission for that. So stupid. We say we're about our community, but we really don't, we really don't help them out. That's horrible. All right, so here's the deal. These Both these cards look just alike, right? They're both blue. They both say business in them. There's just two words different, plus and cash. If you're a cash back person, then the business cash is for you, okay? Because right now they're having a 0% card for 12 months, meaning whatever credit limit they give you, okay? That's gonna be based on your credit. That's why you wanna have the best credit score you can to have the highest limit you can. Whatever credit score... You, the best credit score you have is the higher limit you're going to get, right? So you really want to make sure that you keep your personal credit together because this is how you're going to qualify for these cards, okay? It's not going to be from your business credit, right? American Express is making sure somebody signs on the dotted line for the business, okay? So um, literally this one right here is MR points, 2X on every purchase spent, right? Up to 50K per year. And then it goes to one point after that, unlimited, okay? Um, limited 1x okay but up to 50k boom all right so you can ring you can ring the bag up here okay and remember what we talked about with mr points you could get this combine it with a charles schwab or you can get this start travel hacking whatever you want to do the business cash card is is going to be cash back okay real cash back okay up to 50k per year cash back all right so whatever your preference whatever your cup of cappuccino you know that's what it is that's what it do these two cards right here are the only cards of my recollection going on right now that is 0%, okay? So if you're trying to get a 0% credit card, you can do it right now if you're an American Express holder and it's a soft pull, right? 
If you're not American Express holder, then yeah, it's going to be a hard pull from Experian. They're going to pull your personal credit. They're not going to pull your business credit. So let's look at some travel cards for those people that like Marriott and Delta. I put it in there for you. Hilton also has a business credit card. Okay. So if you want to be getting the sign up bonus uh, with the Hilton business card, you can do that. It does not come with the diamond, um, but it does have a lot of great perks on it that you guys can look up yourself. Let's look at real estate investing cards. Joe, listen up, brother. Listen up. This is going to be a fun one. Okay. And I know that you'll speak about this in the mentorship. So if you're doing real estate investing, fixing, flipping, wholesaling, whatever the case is, um, here's a good one for people doing home repairs or fixing up homes, the Lowe's business rewards card. Now, I think I've went in Lowe's for bubble gum. I can't change my tires. I can't change my oil. I can barely hang something up on my wall. Hit my thumb one time with a hammer. I said, screw, I'm not made for this life. So I don't go into Lowe's, okay? But when I was looking into this, for people that use this card, they told me they use this card a lot. Look at this, 5% cash back in the first six months. You spend 100K in Lowe's, 5K is back in your pocket for the first six months. That's pretty good, right? Um, and then after that, it's 2% uh, cash back, all right? 2% cash back on Lowe's, right? And then you have the different, different business categories, right? 2% uh, uh, on business categories, so office supplies, stores, wireless phone, things like that, and 1% back on everything else. And then they have the Lowe's Pro Services, too, that you can check out. So I'm sure people that are fixing homes are going to Menards, they're going to Lowe's, Home Depot, these things like that, right? Stores I don't go to. So these stores, these, these cards right here will help you just give you more cash back. And if you want another hack, why don't you go shopping online with this card? Use a shopping portal. So use a shopping portal, use your Lowe's card, and then bam, you're getting 5% back, guys, at Lowe's. Business Platinum card. Now, I have this card, and I like it. I'm going to tell you why I like it in a minute. So 5X on flights and prepaid hotels. I don't give a crap about that one, all right? They also have their pay over time, but there's no, there's no uh, feature. You see, 18%, 27%, be my guest, not for me. Okay, now they are gonna give you 1.5 uh, points back on suppliers, electronic retailers, software, things like that, right? Um, now, this is cool too. On purchases that you make more than $5,000, you're going to get 1.5 uh, points back, okay? So one and a half points. So if you have an order that's $4,000, see if you can add an extra $1,000 and you can get more points back, you can have a bigger write-off and then you're not shopping later because if you're going to need that 1,000 later anyway, if you're going to need something else that costs 1,000 anyway, you might as well just get it in one lump sum at one retailer, one purchase, that's over $5,000. So that way you get the most bang for your bucks on points. Again, people don't think ahead, so they get screwed with the points that they could be receiving. They don't know how to play the game, they get screwed, right? So I love it for this aspect right here and, the, and just also the travel with the platinum. Now, because I'm gonna be traveling more, I'm probably gonna hold on to the card. And I actually may uh, downgrade this and go into, uh, the, the Charles Schwab, because I use my gold card all the time. And I also use this other card that I'm going to talk to you about in a minute. But as you can see, you're going to get the airline credit with the business card, all the same things that you're getting with the personal card on that side. Uh, now, the difference is going to be, you know, Dell, you get a credit with Dell. If you're doing any hiring a deed, you're a creative Photoshop, a, Adobe Premiere software with Adobe, anybody that's in graphic design or any creative arts knows Adobe's the deal. Um, and yeah, so I mean, you get the Hilton Honors, gold status, Marriott Bonvoy, gold status, no foreign transaction fees. It's pretty much the identical thing. They just switched out business perks instead of personal perks and kept all the travel perks. So um, yeah, the business platinum is cool. Um, the cool thing too is, is when contractors are sending you large invoices, it's good to play, pay with the platinum because you have the, the higher credit limits there usually uh, for that. I've seen cards up to 230,000 limits on these things. Uh, they're used like crazy in the real estate world, um, just handling these high invoices, right? And getting points off of it. Um, so 
A lot of people say, I got the platinum card, or I got the platinum card. Just know, why do you have the platinum card? Are you having the platinum card because you're traveling? Do you have the platinum card because, you know, you really want to use that 1.5? You know, what? why do you have it? Because it's really not for everybody, just like the black card. The black card is really just for showing off and having, you know, making content around it. It's really not a great card. I didn't even put it, I didn't put the Centurion black card in here for a reason, because it's just not something any of you, I think, will ever get. It's very, very limited. Um, and at the same time, if you could get it, uh, it's really not worth it when you look at the perks, but it's up to you. Ecom cards. This and the gold card are my favorite cards. Um, the business gold and the business plum are by far my favorite cards. Here's why. Cash flow is king. Okay. It's the cash flow, baby. Cash flow. So why do I like the plum card? You don't get any MR points, but check this out. Pay early, you get rewarded. So early pay, early pay discount or extra pays, extra days to pay. When you cash flow allows, earn 1.5 unlimited cash back on everything that you ever purchase. When you pay within 10 days of your statement closing day, there's no cap on how much money you can earn or no purchase category. So people doing manufacturer spending, this would be a good one as well, okay? Because you get 1.5% cash back unlimited Okay, and it's not reporting to your personal credit either. So most people, I'm gonna let I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna save that for another call. But yeah, basically, guys, 1.5 percent unlimited cash back. It doesn't report to your personal credit. It's sweet. No preset spending limit. So here's the deal: when you need more time, we got your back with up to 60 days to pay without interest. Just pay your minimum payment due by your payment due date. So how that works is every 30 days, you're gonna pay 10% of your actual bill owed. So if you if you put $10,000 on this card in a month, you're gonna pay $1,000 in 30 days, and that remaining $9,000 will be due in 60 days. I'll say that again. If you spend $10,000 today, when your bill is due, you will only pay $1,000. But you will owe that remaining $9,000 60 days from when, you know, from when it was due. So 30 days, 60 days, right? So this card is incredible for real estate. It's incredible for e -com because when you can have it, so you only pay in full every 60 days. Oh my goodness. I mean, just being able to have that, that runway is amazing. In this situation, I could care less about the points. I'm usually using this card for the, I, I'm always using this card when I use it for the cash flow, right? So here's a case in point. It's been what every 90 to 120 days that I'd open up the mentorship, right? Right. Whenever I open up the mentorship, there's a large cash influx into the business. So think about how beneficial a card like the plum card would be, especially if I had two of them. Because you can have two plum cards. So you can actually stagger them. Okay. <laughs> and so you could even have three plum cards. Okay. And you could have it for all in the same business if you want. They're just different accounts. Right. So, yeah, guys, I love the plum card for cash flow. This is a cash flow king. Uh, let's look at another one. Shamori, all you guys in ecom, right? The Amazon Business Prime card. 5% cash back or 90 day terms? Woo. How would you guys like to pay in full for 90 days on Amazon Business? Amazon.com and Whole Foods. Let's go. That's groceries, y'all. You can start shopping at Whole Foods. Oh, your bill in 90 days or get 5% cash back. You choose. Okay, so 5% back or 90 days. I'll take the 90 days. Let me go Amazon FBA. Okay, you don't want to see me. If I have some time, I'll Amazon FBA with you guys. 2% back on U.S. purchases at restaurants, gas station, wireless phone. These are the things people would want and need anyway. This is a great card, phenomenal card. Number one, you can get a high limit with it. Remember, you can get a credit limit increase every 90 days, 3X, your credit limit. Doesn't report to your personal credit. If you're doing Amazon, you're buying from Amazon, things like that in the fine terms. 90 days, guys, three months. A lot can happen in three months, <laughs> okay? So um, we just went through that. You guys can check that out in your own time. So here's eight AMAX hacks I want to talk about. 
Some of these you may know, some of these you may not know. I don't want to assume everybody knows. I want to be able to give some game to some people here. So the first one is the no inquiry hack. If you are a personal card member of American Express, you can apply for every single credit card that you see on the personal and on the business side with no inquiry whatsoever. I'll say that again. If you have an American Express personal, personal, personal card, you can apply for another personal card or another business card without you ever having an inquiry. So you can apply as much as you want, go at it, try to get the cards that you want without having to worry about your credit being pulled. It's beautiful. Now, flip side of that, if you're a business card holder and you want to get a personal card, eh, it's going to be a hard pull. Business going to personal, hard pull. Personal going to business, no hard pull. Okay. But once you're a personal card member, now the inquiry, no inquiry hack works. Okay. 14 card hack. We kind of talked about already. You can have up to 14 cards with American Express. Most people don't know that. Some people even have more because they were grafted in before this actual data point was released. Okay. So before you could even have more, but 14 cards is your limit. 10 charge cards. What is a charge card? A plum, a gold, a platinum, a green. Those are a charge card. Let's say it again. A green, a gold, a platinum, a plum, a green, a gold, a platinum, a plum. Those are charge cards. Everything else, credit cards, okay? The employee card hack, you can get employee cards and they usually have bonuses as well. And that's another play with manufacturer spending is <laughs> run it all up, okay? You get 10, 10 employee cards. You guys, employee card does not count as one of your 10, okay? It's an employee card. It's a sub card. I think you can have up to 99 employee cards per card. I, I, I'd have to double check, but you can actually have a lot of employee cards and then you can set limits and things like that. Um, so yeah, that's another hack. So if you have a business and uh, you're not utilizing this, you should, okay? Because you can, you, can, uh, you can customize these things. Authorized user hack, okay? The authorized user hack is being an authorized user on an American Express card. So that way you're in their ecosystem. That's basically what it is. So that way, maybe you get marketed to and, and are able to get in through the back door in that sense of a lower credit score sometimes just because you've had history with American Express. Now, um, if you get added on as an authorized user, you're not going to get the uh, credit history of that account. I'll say that again. If you're an authorized user, you're not going to get the credit history of that account. But what you will get is um, you will be in their ecosystem so they can market to you, right? And when you're in their ecosystem and they have data points on you and they use AI on you, now you have a good chance of getting in or not getting in, depending on how you look at it, depending on how you treat the account. If the person that you're on the account with is not responsible, it's going to hurt you. If they're responsible, it's going to help you. So hope that helps. The Amex get out of jail hack. I did that. <sighs> yeah, I'm good. You know? Mm. I was bucketed. I'm going to tell you my story in a minute, but uh, I had my card bucketed to $4,000 and it finally went out of jail. Literally, I went to jail, Amex jail back in mm, September or October of 2020. And I finally got out of jail last month. What I mean by that was I had my bucket even removed from my business gold card. I got a random email because I was using it. It got removed. So the way that you get out of a bucketed card is by using that card day in, day out, and eventually something triggers something within their algorithm that says no more bucketed. You're, you're released. You're out of jail. So um, that's one of them. The other thing to get out of American Express jail if you are in bad standing with them is to do a lot of spend with them. And then if you're not good with standing with them, you need to be getting back and using the second chance hack with the Optima card. Okay. Some people say the Optima is not around. It's still around. The Optima car, card is a second chance card. So if you've ever um, done American Express wrong and you need a second chance, a second start, you have a write-off account, you call them up and you say, I owe you money and I am willing to pay the balance that I owe you in full. And I want a second chance with American Express. They have a department. 
You have to call around, you have to talk around, but they have a department where you can get a second chance with American Express, but you are going to have to pay the balance that you owe them in full. And yes, they know what that balance is. This is not a case where you settle, try to do a settlement, things like that. that there's no settling with American Express. It's their way or the highway. You get onto their train or you don't get on the train, okay? So a second chance hack is how that works out um, with them. You just call them up and you get on the Optima. Charles Schwab hack, we talked about that, where you're, you're, you're siphoning your MR points to your brokerage account, then you're buying stocks with that money in your, in your brokerage account, and then you're moving that money from there. We're not moving that money. You can sell if you want. That's a taxable event. But you can also just leverage that money so you don't have to sell your position, right? Um, and you can just use that portfolio to acquire a line of credit, which that line of credit could acquire a home could acquire anything. If you got a brokerage account that's big enough, guys, some of you guys may even have that right now. Some of you guys may have $300,000 in there. You can get a line of credit off that. You don't have to sell it. Some of you guys think you have to sell your account to get the money out. No, you can leverage that asset. That's an asset. We, we leverage credit to acquire assets to build wealth. Well, we're leveraging the American Express Charles Schwab card to siphon our points <laughs> to acquire assets and then we leverage that asset to get more credit to build more wealth. That's how credit works. It's a leverage game. But you don't get credit just that I got this, I got that, right? You have to actually have a purpose for that credit. Another thing is if you're in the military, you should not be paying military fees on the credit cards, okay? So make sure that you call them up and say, hey, I'm part of the military. I want this annual fee waived. Now the platinum is really a good deal for you because you're not paying the annual fee on it. So make sure you guys check on that. So what are the 17 things you should never do with Amex? Now we're getting into the no-nos. Do not credit card churn with American Express. What is credit card churning? Getting the points, canceling the card. Getting the card, canceling it again. American Express watches this like a hawk, okay? Because this was the game back in the day is credit card churning. It's not so much big anymore, but here's the deal. If I open up a platinum card, and I close my platinum card within a year, I lose my points of attached to that point in the platinum card that, that came with it. So if I had 150,000 bonus with, with American Express, right? And I cancel that card within a year, I lose that bonus. They take it, they claw it back. They, they, take the, they take the points back, okay? So do not, do not cancel the card in the first year. Do not. You look like a churner and they will come after you. And they may even tag you in their system where the rat team's watching you or the, the almighty algorithm, the Skynet's watching you. The last thing you want is American Express Skynet watching you, okay? So don't churn the credit cards, not worth it. Also, do not get a credit card with American Express and then try to you know, wipe the inquiry because there is no inquiry, <laughs> okay? So don't try to do that because if you're an American Express holder, you're not gonna get an inquiry uh, for this. Do not cancel your Amex card until you first move your MR points as well. I don't feel comfortable ever canceling an Amex card without moving my MR points, okay? I just don't, okay? I don't, I don't, I don't trust it. I've seen horror stores happen and I'm just not gonna be that guy that does that. So make sure that before you cancel your Amex card, you move the points. Do not put high spin on American Express right away, okay? Take it slow. Just like dating, take it slow. Don't rush in, you know. Don't, I'm gonna go buy a Rolex. I'm gonna go buy, you know, a diamond ring. I'm gonna go, you know, put this down on a, on, on, on a car. Don't do that. Don't do that, okay? That's the quickest way to trigger that algorithm to have them look because you'll be a, a credit risk, which will trigger a manual review which will trigger the rat team to watch you. This rat team is real. I'm making a video about it for the YouTube channel, okay? But uh, warm up the card. One to six months, warm it up. Put a thousand on it first month. Put two or 3,000 on it the second month. Five to seven on it. Warm it up. Use the card. Actually use the card. If you're not using the card and you're just randomly spending, you're a red flag. So don't, don't do this up and down stuff, you know? Use the card. Make it steady, okay? Work it. Do not buy high risk items in high amounts, jewelry, car down payments, things like that. You know why? Learn from me. That's how I got into Amex jail, okay? I got excited, guys. 
I had a $30,000 Blue Business Plus card. This was my second business card. First one was a business gold. And then I was like, huh, I can get a business Blue Plus card too. I'll get that. They gave me a $30,000 limit. So I had a $30,000 limit on that card. And then I had an unlimited limit on the business credit card, the business gold card. Guess what I did? I bought a brand new Honda Civic. I put $5,000 on, on the card. And then I also bought an expensive piece of jewelry for somebody. And next thing you know, I wake up to an email. Your Blue Business Plus is under further review next day. Same thing with the business gold card. I call them. I send them all my documents about how much money I'm making. Next day, Blue Business Plus card goes from $30,000 to like two or 4000 Horrible. I was planning on using that money. Okay, I was planning on using that money. 30,000 to two to 4,000, zero percent. Okay, this is a zero percent $30,000 card. I'll say it again, 30 grand, zero percent. And it gets moved down to two to four. That's, that's a big, that's, that's, that's a big drop. Okay. And then they bucket my business gold card all the way down to 4k. Okay. And I just got out of jail not too long ago for this right here. So when I tell you to warm it up, I know firsthand. I had the hardest experience with American Express for the little longest. Take it slow. It's not a rush, okay? Let's see here. Do not manufacture on these cards unless it's organic spend. If you don't know how to do this, don't do it. Because American Express, Navy Federal, uh, Chase is another one. They can see third-party spend. If you take your American Express cards and you think you're slick and you saw some recession-proof videos and you think that you can go buy, buy gift cards with it, you're wrong, okay? You will have a manual review. When you have a manual review, they can bucket you, they can reduce your lines, or they can blacklist you. If you're ever blacklisted from American Express, you can never get back in. Is it worth it? Is the short form worth it? No. Don't be out here manufacture spending unless you know what you're doing. Talk to Dub, okay? Talk to Dub, okay? Those of you guys that know, we did a manufacturing call. If you want to look up manufacturer spend, we have one in our mentorship for all everybody new. You guys can learn how to do it properly, okay? If you want to do it. Basically, it's leveraging the point system to give you extra income. It's controversial. It's a gray area. Beware. There's a lot of things that can happen. It's not illegal, but you need to know what you're doing. Otherwise, you're going to lose some cards and lose some limits and it's not going to be a good deal for you, okay? So do not go out and do something that you don't know how to do. Make sure that you know what you're doing before you do it and don't do this unless there's organic spend on there, okay? That's all I'm going to say. They have the ability, like I said, to see what you're spending, okay, at any time. Don't do this at all. Do not invoice yourself with your merchant account and pay with your own Amex card. Oh my God. This is the quickest way to get your card shut down, card blacklisted, card bucketed, and your merchant account shut down. You do not want to play around with your merchant account. We're going to do trainings on that. Like the moment your digital footprint gets messed up with a merchant account, you are not in a good shape at all. Okay. So you do not want to play around with that. Do not invoice yourself and pay with Amex. Do not also do it to some person all the time because they catch on to that, okay? If somebody invoices you also, make sure that they have a seasoned merchant account. Some, some merchant accounts aren't verified, so it looks at risk, and that can also trigger a manual review. So make sure that who you're spending your money with, with American Express, make sure that they're seasoned, Okay, because if American Express doesn't like the merchant account, they may call the, the, the purchase into question and look into things. And then they have their rat team that's sophisticated with their AI and their algorithms and, and they'll go to work. So be very careful. Like if you don't know somebody, don't pay with, you know, this type of card. Now, I mean, you're like, well, I want buyer protection. Okay, cool. But just know, know that it could trigger it. Okay. Just know that. Do not screw up your relationship with Amex. They barely give second chances. You said they do. They barely do. 
okay? And if you do, you're, you're one of the few, okay? They hold grudges. They are the worst grudge holder, okay? So they don't believe in second chances that much. So if you do want a second chance, you need to call them up, say, I want to pay in full. But before I pay in full, I want to promise in writing that I can literally get into this, you know, second chance system that you guys have, this Optima card, whatever it is, because I want to have a relationship with you guys again, okay? And you're going to be paying what you owe them plus interest, whatever that is. So just be aware of that, okay? So don't screw that relationship up. Do not pay late. My goodness. Like the biggest way to screw up your credit is to pay late. You'll, you'll suffer for seven years for that. Um, the other thing is, is, is to, to screw up your utilization. Now, utilization, you can fix in a month, right? So you max out a credit card, score drops all the way down, okay? Pay it all the way off, or pay it all the way down, boom, right back up. So that's not a problem. But if you're late one time, <laughs> you're, you're dealing with that late for seven years. So just be smart, guys. Put your stuff on auto pay. It takes one bad, bad move, one careless mistake when life is busy to make you suffer for seven years for something where you don't get approved for the cards you want, for the homes you want, for whatever it is, you'll be suffering for that for seven years. Now, some of y'all don't have seven years. Some of you guys are going to be dead in seven years. You guys are getting old, okay? But some of y'all young people, you know, that's still going to be an eternity for you, you know, because... And if you're 23, you're not going to be able to do it until you're in your 30s. So and get out, get out of that late fee. So guys, just don't pay late, period. And on top of that, it's massive fees with American Express, and it's it's horrible data points for you internally. Do not lie on your credit app. I know, I got to say it. You could trigger a manual review. Now, here's the deal, okay? Anything over $70,000 on your credit that you apply for on American Express can trigger the manual review. And it's been known to do that. So if you say I make 120K, your credit score drops a little bit because they can also see when your credit score drops, right? So they have these things in place where if your credit score drops 10 points or 20 points, suddenly they look into you and things like that. I'm telling you, it's just gonna get worse too, okay? Um, with AI. So anything over 72,000 um, stated income, um, you are at risk for a manual review, just to give you a heads up on that. And uh, we already know what happens at a manual review. Going off that, do not ask for credit limit increases unless you need it. Why? Anything over $35,000 in credit limits with Amex has been known to trigger a manual review. So if you have a $20,000 card, you have a $5,000 card, you have $25,000. Do you really need that extra $10,000? What are you going to do with it? If it's not a 0% card, what are you going to do with it? You're better off getting charge cards and keeping your credit limits on the credit cards below 35000 so you don't have this situation happen. Okay? They're talking about $35,000 internally with credit limits on credit cards, not charge cards. Okay? We're talking about credit cards. But if you have credit limits at 35 or higher, you are at risk for a manual review. So I'm telling you, do not ask for the credit limit increase unless you really need it, unless you really have a purpose for it. Just be content with $25,000 in available credit. Or one of the things that you can do is if you don't want to have two cards, you can call them up and say, hey, listen, I'd like to reallocate my credit. This is a cool thing of Amex. If you have a $25,000 card and a $5,000 card, you can call them up and say, hey, listen, can you move my $5,000 card, my $5,000 limit to my highest card, the, the one that's $25,000? They'll say, no problem. We'll do that for you, right? And so they'll move that and they'll shut that card down if you want, okay? So, and obviously don't shut cards down that are on the personal side. Shutting them on the business side makes no difference. But on the personal side, don't do it, okay? If you get a manual review, participate. Don't ignore it. If you ignore it, it gets worse. So just participate. It's not gonna be pretty if you get it. Just letting you know, that's why avoid getting it. Avoid getting extra credit that you don't need. Avoid lying on credit apps. Avoid purchases that are risky. Warm up your credit cards. Don't just jump and dive right in, okay? You have to be safe with them, okay? Because they don't want somebody running off with their money and not paying, okay? Sorry. Do not pay your bill with points. Pay with points is the worst thing you can do, okay? It's the worst evaluation for your money, okay? You're better off moving them into a brokerage account 
or you're better off using them for travel hacking, but you're not better off using them to pay for your bill. I know, I know it's appealing when you owe $1,500 and you got enough points to cover it. But listen, those points can be thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars that you don't have access to if you were to spend them like that. My other thing is do not use points unless you transfer them out, okay? So always transfer your points out because that's where your, bit, your best bang for your buck is going to be. Do not sign up for cards unless you get the best sign-on bonus. So with American Express, they have a one sign-up bonus per card, which means if I have $100,000, if I have a 100,000 MR point sign-up offer for a platinum and I get that, well, if I ever cancel it and get the platinum again, I won't get that sign-up bonus because it's only per product. So each credit product, you get one sign-up bonus for life. That stops from credit card churning. We just went over that. So if you have an Amex card, right, and you have, you know, a gold card and you cancel it and you want to get another gold card and get the sign-up bonus, you can. If you get a gold card and you don't get the sign-on bonus, you cancel it. You get another gold card because you never got the bonus. You can't. You got one shot at this thing. One shot, lifetime chance at it. Okay? So what does that mean? Don't apply for cards unless you, that you need them, want them, or like them. Because here's the deal. You know, there was, you, know you could have a green card at 30,000 MR points. And then on Black Friday, next thing you know, 70,000 MR points when you spend such and such money. Well, I would have missed out on 40,000 if I would have done that, right? So just kind of know the ball ballpark of what you want. And then when you see that bonus offer, then go for it, okay? Then go for it because you only have one shot at this thing. You can't afford to strike out, okay? Otherwise, you'll miss out. Do not, do not just cancel cards, ask for a retention offer, okay? So like I said, American Express makes money when you use the card, when you swipe the card. They love that. They make a lot of money off that. That's part of the reason why their credit lines are high for people that use the card. Why? Because they get rewarded off the front end and the back end, right? Even just swiping the card where, for example, Chase doesn't. Chase doesn't get that. Chase gets credit on the back end when, you know, uh, when sometimes they get a kickback, Um and then sometimes also, you know, will they get a big kickback when you don't pay your bill and get interest and things like that. So American Express loves you using their cards. So the more you use their card in a year and you ring up spend, you say, hey, I spent $30,000 on this card in a year. You know, listen, I'm, I'm open to keeping this card, but if it doesn't make sense, I need to cancel it. Is there any retention offers that I have to keep my business? And they'll let you know. They'll look into it. Sometimes there are and sometimes there are not. I've had it where there were some big ones and some where there just wasn't. But don't just cancel a card unless you ask uh, for retention first. And also don't just cancel a card until you move the credit line as well, because that's something people don't think about. Not just canceling the cards for the, 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 the points and stuff of the retention offers with the points, but you could also have a credit line that you're getting ready to cancel that you don't know that you can allocate that credit. So make sure that you don't just do canceling without thinking it through, without moving your points first, without calling and talking to retention first, make sure you have all of your T's crossed and your I's dotted so that way you're good to go. 15, do not forget to enroll in benefits for your cards and special offers. Within your Amex uh, portal, you'll be able to apply offers to your card, right? So you can have like different additional cash back. So you're gonna, you can apply these offers to your cards, right? You get additional cash back, extra points. You shop online through shopping portals to get extra points from that or extra perks from that or extra cash back from that. And then you also get the points from your actual card. So you're literally triple dipping. That's how you triple dip, okay? You got to play smart. You got to be smart. You got to know the game. So number one, make sure that all of the special offers are enrolled in the back end of your Amex. That's step number one. Each card has their own, okay? Number two, Download the Chrome extensions of the shopping portals to your Chrome browser and then sign in. So every time you go to a website, if they have an offer, they'll pop up for you and say, would you like to activate 2.5 cash back? Would you like to activate 7% cash back? Whatever the case is, you say yes, boom. Okay, cool. The reason why those shopping portals are there is it's called affiliate marketing. 
if you go to Macy's and you buy something from Macy's, Macy's gives American Airlines or Macy gives uh, Alaska Airlines uh, a kickback. And then they also give you a kickback as far as miles goes for you using them to help bring business to them as well, because they get business from you just shopping there. Okay. Basically they're saying they recommended you. So they're, they're cycling it through. A lot of people don't know that. 16, do not use the wrong Amex card for purchases. Every card is unique with perks, okay? Platinum versus green. We've already looked at the difference between the platinum and the normal green card, okay? I don't like the business green, for example. I hate the business green card. That's why I didn't put it in here. I hate it. It's worthless. So I like the personal green and I like the business platinum, but I don't like the normal platinum and the personal green. I mean, I just think the platinum normal is kind of overrated unless you really use it correctly. Do not get a business plat Amex first. We went over that. You want to always get a personal Amex first for the inquiry hack to work. Let's talk about my experience with Amex real quick. My first Amex card was because of this hero right here, Mr. Ask Sebi. Okay. So funny that I'm now a YouTuber on, on YouTube doing finance videos and I learned how to get a credit card from Ask Sebi. Super cool. Excited to one day meet him and tell him that. Started my travel hacking with the Aspire card, but I actually started with the Platinum card, okay? Um, so yeah, the Hilton Diamond status, like I said, it goes into other statuses. I've gotten free nights at, at resorts. This was incredible. And, and um, Cabo San Lucas, amazing resort down there. If you ever go down to, to Cabo and the Baja, definitely stay at the Hilton Resort. Use your Hilton card. You will thank me later. The chorizo is off the chain. Uh, went to Amex Jail. Like I said, credit lines were slashed, 30K to to 2k overnight credit cards were bucketed wasn't fun at all but i got out of jail free okay i got out of jail free and uh just recently got that to happen to me and it took almost two years so uh, it was a long time 24 months right here's my current cards i got the business platinum got the business plum got the business gold got the personal green i got the hilton aspire card those are my cards okay i don't need a bunch of them right um like i said i leveraged the heck out of these cards, but I don't just get cards to get cards, you know? Um, so final thoughts, takeaways to remember, massive credit lines with Amex are available to you. These credit lines are algorithmic, okay? So they reward people with high spend that use the cards. They don't reward people that want the lines, but don't use the cards. They, there's no reason to give it to you. Chase and Amex have the best travel reward points. Do not mess up with Amex. Do not burn this bridge. Business funding can be massive, all right?